Today we're going to be trying to make duplicate keys for three different kinds of locks ranging from the most basic one to a 9 pin dimple core lock which is supposed to be really secure and we're going to accomplish this with nothing but a photo of the key and a 3D printer. This experiment will not only test how secure each of these lock types are but also prove to you that 3D printing can be a really powerful tool even if you have relatively basic design skills. But why are we doing this? Well, a couple of weeks ago, I found this lock in my storage and I can't seem to find the key for it. Trust me, I've looked everywhere and without the key, this is just an expensive paperweight. Okay, I was wrong for some weird reason. This is actually significantly cheaper than most paperweights. So, um, not sure why paperweights still exist. Anyway, my point is, I regret losing the key. But then I remembered something important. I once saw this TikTok about a really fat monkey, which was absolutely hilarious. But right under that TikTok was another video where this dude took a photo of a key with a coin right next to it for size reference and got a locksmith to make a duplicate key for him based on that photo. And I thought to myself, I am good at photography and I have a 3D printer with which I can make stuff. So if I had just clicked a photo of the key, could I have made a duplicate key myself? Is it that easy to bypass locks? That's what we're here to find out. Which brings us back to these three locks. The first of which is this one. It's a standard cheap shitty padlock which uses this key with some very basic rectangular teeth. And to try and replicate it, I'm first gonna click a photo of it with a ruler next to it for reference. After this, we're gonna import the photo into Fusion 360, trace the outline of the key and make it about 1.5 millimeters or 1 16th of an inch thick which is an assumption on my part then we can print it out in about 10 minutes and here it is compared to the actual key i have to say it's pretty close i can't even tell which one's the 3d printed one i i feel like i really need to go to the eye doctor anyway let's test it out i'm gonna lock it first with the real key throw it in the trash because no regrets and then unlock it with the fake one and oh that was surprisingly easy. I was expecting it to take at least a couple of redesigns, but apparently not. Okay, on to the next one. Now the intermediate level lock is this little guy, and it uses this key which has triangular teeth of varying sizes with some very pointy and precise looking corners, but it doesn't stop there. Take one look at the key from this angle and you'll realize that the key itself is kind of S-shaped, and that just fucks things up for us even more. Can a man not lead an easy, comfortable life of crime for one fucking second? Anyway, another thing to note here is that this type of key was pretty commonly used in relatively modern cars and various other kinds of consumer products, so I'm assuming that there's a good chance that it's really secure and we might not be able to copy it, but since I like to live dangerously, I want to raise the stakes by locking my coffee mug with my pants and then tossing the key in the trash. So if I don't unlock it with my duplicate key, you'll see a very cranky and pantsless version of me in the next video. Let's do the the same thing again, click a photo of the key from both sides because they're different this time and then make a sketch and extrude it. Now here comes the tricky part. Since we don't know a lot about the profile of these grooves, we're gonna have to assume a bunch of stuff and hope it works out for us. Now just to be clear, I'm not allowed to look at the keys after I've clicked the photos because I want to keep this realistic for the aspiring criminals watching and all of the b-roll showing unique features of the keys was shot later for the video. But from my brief time looking at this key I do remember that these grooves were kind of circular in shape. So that's what I did for my duplicate key and after printing it out here's what it looks like. And it does not work. I tried a bunch of different groove sizes as well but it's just not working. Now the issue is obviously the contours and I guess it's kind of reassuring in a way to see how difficult it is to make a fake key for this lock but it also bums me out. Literally because me bums are out in the cold without me pants man. Uh, I apologize for that joke. At this point, I can either give up and try the third lock, or I can maybe have another look at the lock and key to figure out a solution, which would be against the rules, but I really want to rig this lock, so I think I'm going to do it. 
after taking a second look at the lock, I found something interesting that we can use to potentially circumvent the whole groove problem. No, not that. I was talking about this. But before we talk about that, I would like to thank my sponsor for this video, PCBWay. If you guys want to build something, whether it's electronics, mechanical components, 3D printing, CNC, whatever you could possibly need, these guys can help. They've helped me with my past projects and their services are extremely affordable for the quality that you're getting with a quick turnaround. So it's a total no-brainer if you're starting a build project of your own. Check them out at the link in the description. Now back to the video. Okay, so here's what I found. Instead of guessing the size and shape of these grooves, we can just take a look at the keyhole in the lock and use that as reference for cutting out the grooves. And I did exactly that. Here's what the final product looks like. But when I tried to insert it into the keyhole, it did not work. And this time the issue is much simpler to fix. Because of how FDM printing works, it's pretty difficult to get sharp edges and that's what we need for this key. So to fix that, I had to bring out this bad boy. Now some of my older viewers might remember this from my earlier videos when I was still chugging toxic resin and talking about unusually small toilets. But for the new viewers, this is a resin 3D printer which uses an LCD screen with a 4K resolution to harden the resin. So small details like these are very easy to replicate. This is what the resin key looks like and now let's try it out. Finally, it worked. I mean sure, this was considerably more difficult to replicate compared to the first key, but still, as someone with very basic CAD and 3D printing skills, this was certainly doable, which is frankly a bit alarming. But I hope our final lock, which is this dimple core lock, will prove to be much more secure. But before we start working on it, if you're enjoying this video so far, please consider liking and subscribing. Okay, that was an unfortunate typo. It was supposed to say consider liking and subscribing here, so um, please do not lick your screens. Okay, back to the third lock. So for those who haven't encountered a lock like this before, here's how it's different from your traditional locks. It uses dimples instead of teeth for the key and to make it more secure. It has those dimples on three sides instead of just one like a regular key for a total of nine dimples and nine pins that fit into these dimples. Also, this key is reversible like a USB-C plug. So we only need to take two photographs of this key, one from the side and one from the bottom. Now the biggest challenge with this key is the dimples. More specifically, the depth of each of these dimples. In a traditional key, you can measure how deep or shallow the teeth are, but with this key, you can't really measure it that easily. So again, we kind of need to make assumptions about it, and truth be told, it was a really frustrating couple of days trying out different combinations of dimple sizes, because even if you get 8 out of those 9 dimples right, and one's just a tiny bit off, it's not gonna work, and there's no way of telling which dimples are correctly sized, and which ones are not. I was desperate and running out of options, so I started doing some research about dimple locks and found out that the lock picking lawyer has picked this exact lock seven years ago. And the way he did it only required the zigzag raking tool and what looks like an L-shaped piece of metal for leverage. I also found the exact measurements of his rake on Reddit and tried making it for myself, but after a day of trying to pick the lock and hoping it would be as easy as he makes it look in the video, I was on honestly done with this shit. Apparently it's not like stick it in wham bam thank you ma'am. There are 9 G spots to find on 3 different planes and I'm a man so I wouldn't know anything about it. My point is, lock picking is a skill and a rather complex one at that if you're not talking about the most basic of locks. And it's definitely much much harder than intermediate CAD which most tinkerers and 3D printer owners know or can learn about in less than a day. Which further proves my point about how easy it is to break into these locks. Well, not, not this one obviously, I meant the other two. It's been a couple of days since I last worked on this lock and I remembered something from my mechanical engineering lab days in college and I think I'm gonna try that on this lock today. The basic idea is that the tool used for creating each of these dimples would most probably be the same, which means that the chamfer angle used for each of these dimples would be consistent, which then would mean that the depth of each of these dimples will be directly proportional to the diameter of the dimples. In simple words, the bigger the hole, the deeper it is. This advice applies to manholes as well. 
Using this, I started again from scratch and this time I made the chamfer angle a consistent 45 degrees for each of the dimples. And here's what the new key looks like. It probably looks the same as our first attempt, but I assure you it's different where it matters. I'm kind of nervous about this because this is the best that I can do with just a photo. And while I do want these locks to turn out to be secure, I also don't want to fail again. So let's just get it over with. Wow, okay, I was not expecting that. Guess we're 3 for 3, which is great, I guess. Or not? I'm not really sure. But anyway, before we end the video, I would like to tell you that I have a Patreon where I post all of my 3D print files from my past projects, including the keys to this one, which I will be using to secure my bicycle. So for $5 a month, you can basically steal my bicycle. Also, a special thanks to these Patreon members for sticking around. This month, all of their money is going towards fighting homelessness particularly for me, it's just gonna help out with my rent. I kinda forgot to earn money this year. But anyway, that's about it, I guess. Comment down below if you wanna see me make something else. And while you're at it, I highly recommend watching this video next. I think you're gonna like it. See you later, bye. You and I, we are so random. You bring the darkness to the lights, play the atom. I ignore the fact that this will never last.